everyone, it's Dona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. I brought my notebook in today, and I put on this Karina Anna's crocheting. I think her channel is, but it's Karina Anna. She made this for me, and she made the flower that, I, that is on it. Because I'm wearing sleeveless shirt, and I don't really like a sleeveless shirt, so I put, this is perfect. Even though it is kind of warm right now, but it's perfect just the same for me. Well, I brought the notebook in because I wanted to talk about um, the air outside, how it smells. You know, I don't know if your air smells like this or not, but let, when we went on a motorcycle trip, I think it was in the fall or late summer, late summer trip, and we had gotten to a hotel, and I said to the lady at the hotel, I said, your air smells like baby powder. And I know I had put baby powder on that day, and I thought, well, maybe I'm smelling my baby powder. But no, it's the air, because when I go outside in the morning, the air smells like that here. So we have beautiful smelling. If you like the smell of Johnson & Johnson's baby powder, you'll like the smell of my outdoors, because that's what it smells like. And I said to Jim, I said, you know, we're right next to the chicken coop. If it was going to stink, it should stink, but it doesn't stink. It smells like baby powder out there. Fresh country air. Fresh country air, that's for sure. <clears throat> so that's what I was thinking. I was going to tell you that I have really nice smelling air. <laughs> um, I took, today I took Mr. Brown outside. He went to chicken school, but nobody seemed to want to come out and play. None of the chickens came to investigate him. So I walked over into the grass, and he follows me into the grass, and I have to watch because he's underneath your feet. like Just like when they're following the mother hens, they're underneath their feet, and the mother hen is the one if she doesn't step on them. Well, I had to watch to make sure I didn't step on him. And I sat down in the grass a while and was picking at the grass, and he started picking at the grass, but none of the none of the chickens came over to see what the heck we were doing, nothing. They didn't have anything to do with us today. So then um, I also put Mr. Brown on the kitchen floor and let him walk around and see what Jake was going to do, and Jake kind of watched for a little bit and then just eh, went to scratching his fleas because he's got, I think he's, ever since he went to the vet, he's got fleas. I bet you he picked up fleas from there. Because yeah. he didn't have fleas before. And it's like, I'm still fighting it, fighting them on him. And I, I, I dust his bedding with the flea powder, and then he won't lay in it. I put the flea powder on him, and then he'll drag himself all over the place trying to get it off. He really doesn't like, apparently, the smell of it or the or the thought of it being on him. So he he's he really didn't pay any attention to Mr. Brown. But Mr. Brown pooped a few times on the floor, which is expected. I was talking to someone in the comments, and I don't remember who, but they were they were referring, comparing, not referring, comparing Mr. Brown's behavior to, like, the baby's behaviors, which, yes, babies poop a lot, and they let out little squirts, and they, they spit up a lot. So you'd be cleaning that off or cleaning that up. And he's kind of the same thing. And then somebody else commented that as he gets older, he will have better control and it won't happen as often, which is probably true, too. I did look up, I was looking up to see whether there were therapy roosters or emotional support roosters. Apparently there is. And, but they're, they're little roosters. They're a bantam rooster, the, the ones that I found. But I thought that interesting, too. So roosters... Even though they're not considered one of the animals that people would want to have as a pet, he may end up being okay. I don't know. We'll see. We have time. Still time. Then I took him out on the porch, and he's, he walked around on the porch for a while. And on the little chair that I was sitting had a rung on it, and I had my feet on the rung of the chair. And he tried several times to get himself on that rung. He got on the rung, but it's apparently too smooth or too round or too something. And he would fall off and he went clunk clunk. And it was funny because he walked around a little bit and then he'd look at the rung again and he'd try again. And he, of course, pooped out there a few times on the porch. And so I brought some toilet paper out in a little bucket so that when he would poop, I could pick it up. They're just itty bitty tiny little poopies. And 
um, some of them are gushy and some of them are not. Some of them you can just pick up. So I like the ones that you can just pick up. I don't like the gushy ones. <laughs> but um, <coughs> then Jim and I were talking about kids and the masks because when they go to school, they're going to have to wear a mask. How many kids do you know that when you look at their sleeves would be awful of snot? <laughs> I'm thinking, oh my goodness, this is going to be awful underneath those masks. How many think, of those? Think of the little kids that haven't <laughs> learned to put, use their sleeve yet, too. <laughs> Oh, and the, and it's dripping down, dripping down, dripping down, almost mm -hmm. into their mouth. And then they go, and it mm -hmm. slips right back up. <laughs> but that's, can you just see this with the masks and these kids? Uh, it's going to be, a, it's going to be bad. They're going to be sick because they're going to be dragging their, their snotty noses in their masks. And their masks are going to be all goo. To, oh, gosh, I don't even want to think about it. It's kind of gross. But <laughs> good thing you're not a teacher anymore. Good thing, or an or, or, the, or an aide at the school. But you know the school that I worked at, I'm sure they would never put masks on because we can't even get the kids to put hats on, let alone a mask on. And um, I think that even the workers are going to be. It's going to be difficult for them to see the workers with a mask on unless they make a mask that looks like um, if they like dinosaurs or some. They'd have to fi figure out what the kids like. Because otherwise they won't go near you um, with this mask on because you're gonna look you're gonna look scary to them. These are all these children are the are um, autistic children that I'm speaking of, and they really they don't like change at all. So it's gonna be a real real difficult challenge because you have to be right with them because they're they don't have any any sense of danger. They could walk right into the street and never think that the car, they figure, they don't figure anything, actually. The, they have no fear of anything. They could walk to the edge, like when we would go on our walks, we'd go on a bridge. And we had kids that would have probably climbed the railing and would have hung over. And who knows if they'd have jumped or not. They, I don't know. They don't have fear. So the masks... Of that stuff, they don't have fear, but the masks may may scare them. I have a feeling it's going to scare them. So you have to be one on one with them, and they are very visual, tactile. Um, so you know they're not gonna they're not gonna like that. And how are you going to do speech? That's another thing. How are you going to do speech when you say, "Well, read, look at my mouth," and when I say "chicken," <laughs> you're supposed to say "chicken." And follow what my mouth is doing. You can't do it. It's going to be a real fiasco. Oh, this is so so uh, so sad. Well, anyways, that's what I was thinking today. I hope you enjoyed this little chat of my thinkings, and I will talk to you all again tomorrow. So you take care. Bye bye. <laughs>